two-month break, the ELMS drivers have arrived here in Barcelona, a popular tourist location. Although not for their summer holidays, but for the second part of the ELMS season that will be getting underway at the Circuit de Barcelona, Catalunya. Now before then, we proposed two ELMS teams, Nielsen Racing and United Autosports, and challenged them to a game of paddle tennis. It's a national sport here in Spain. So let's see how they fare. Dodgy. It's going to take at least 10 mile an hour out of here. We've got a bounce on our side. Winning the point is the game. Mario Rodrigo delivered the first win of the weekend. Yeah. Minimum effort, maximum result. Clearly, they're as competitive on a paddle court as they are on track. In fact, talking about track, let's head back there. The drivers are raring to go. So let's take a look at the current overall standings coming into the fourth round here in Barcelona. After finishing on the top step of the podium in Monza, the car number 77 Proton competition leapt to the top of the current LMGTE standings. The number 17 of Cool Racing is still in the lead despite a disappointing race in Monza in LMP3 and in LMP2, the number nine Prima Racing continues to dominate the category with a 13-point lead over IDEX Sport. One of the drivers from Prema Racing currently leading in LMP2 is Louis de la Traz. Born to a racing family, Louis won the ELMS Championship in LMP2 with WRT Racing in 2021 and is hoping to repeat that accolade this year too. We caught up with him to find out more about his objectives and the one race he dreams of winning. Uh, high speed is completely fine. I will just stick to the lower rear, that's fine for me. Uh, just we need to find a bit more support mechanically. Uh, Stiffer, I'm pretty sure it's not helping here. The rear is sort of like you're chasing it a lot. Um, the rest of the lap, it feels quite nice. I'm very close with my father since so obviously he put me into motorsport. Uh, I'm probably here thanks to him big time, so it's a very you know close relationship. We exchange a lot. Uh, we also in moments of doubts, it's someone I can trust because he's my father. I know he will want to help me. Obviously he helped me a lot when I was younger. Uh, now less, he's more distant. He comes to still a lot of races, but uh, more as a spectator than as a uh, as a help. Let's say. Yeah, Prema is a big family, also with my two teammates. Uh, I enjoy a lot the, the situation and I mean, we all have the same objective, we, we want to win. And I think uh, I'm a big fan of having good relationships with my teammate because I think that's how you go forward. No ego, just performance and uh, wish to win. I see my future in endurance, 100%. Uh, with the new regulation coming up, the hypercar, 
Uh, it's super interesting and I mean I don't aim to be anywhere else. I did enough for a single seater, tried enough for Formula One. There's uh, many different reasons but uh, I mean I love endurance, I love Le Mans, I've been passionate about it since I'm a kid so I'm, uh, I'm very happy and I'm always uh, smiling so that's a good point. For, for us this year is a new team, for sure Le Mans we have uh, the main goal. Uh, we wanted to do well, we finished second so that was beautiful. But uh, we are here to play championships, we don't only think Le Mans. Le Mans is the one event we want to win, we didn't so we will hopefully come back uh, for that but uh, we are aiming for the championship overall and uh, that's also very important to us. Uh, we're still in the championship, we are uh, I mean, coming here again with the same uh, wish to win and extend that, so for sure it's uh, not helping, but you cannot win all the races. It's been two months since the last ELMS round in Monza, so let's find out what two drivers, James Dason and Bent Viscal, got up to during their summer break. Me? Uh, first, yeah, I, uh, so my summer was basically, uh, I had a great holiday with friends, uh, went to Mallorca, so I uh, really enjoyed that one. Uh, of course, a lot of training as well going on, uh, just to be prepared for this race. But uh, yeah, as I said, we had uh, some fun with friends as well. We've had some adventures, uh, Milan, Lake Como, Greece, Paris, Switzerland, and then pretty much the last month in, uh, in the Algarve in Portugal. Um, Time. Luggage has not been good for us. <laughs> We've lost luggage three times. Metallica and Kiss lately, so uh, yeah, it's uh, maybe not completely uh, my sort of age group that was there, but... Uh, Where was that? It was uh, in the Netherlands, so one was in Amsterdam and the other one was in the south, close to Belgium, so, uh, you know, like 80,000 there and for the Metallica stuff. It was really cool. Yeah. I had big shows out in Europe are awesome. We, we caught, we didn't even know Coldplay was coming to Paris when we were there, so... Wife and I got we went a to babysitter. Yeah, yeah that's that was cool. awesome. Really cool. yeah. I support my local team, Heracles Almelo, you might know. We were relegated, unfortunately, from the first league uh, last year, but uh, we're on our way back. Won the last three games out of uh, three. I like hockey, but uh, football Ice hockey, for right? me... Yeah. Not field hockey. Football for me is Liverpool. I uh, actually did a little boys trip with my six-year-old son. We flew up to Liverpool to see their home opener. Cool. Uh, awesome atmosphere, but obviously hasn't been the start for them. I stopped when I was 12 and you can definitely see that I stopped playing football <laughs> at some point, you know. So we were at the same level and then you just see them... Um, they progress. Yeah, they progress and you know, that's, that's kind of a passion of me. I mean, just spending time with, with friends is always good, especially at my age. Might be different at your age now, but you know. Yeah, well, good luck, of course. No, I mean, <laughs> that's the most obvious one. No, yeah. I mean, I mean Keep it clean. Eh? Yeah, it's uh, it gets busy here for sure. Oh man! You know, and I wish you guys good luck. We're not in the same category, so it makes it a little easier, especially since he said he likes Man U and Liverpool. <laughs> I wish him all the best. Yeah, same to you. Thank then. you very much. Thank you. Safety is top priority at any motorsport event. And one person who manages that is, of course, the race director. We caught up with Fayez Ramsey to find out more about his role and what his responsibilities are over the course of a race weekend. No, we'll go once uh, through uh, full lap and then we'll do the... Lisa, can we uh, go pit exit green from your side or? Yes, thank you. The pit exit light and from yellow exit from the circuit. They turned it green, thank you. Safety is number one. For my first job is to ensure safety before anything else. Uh, safety of the competitors, safety of the marshals, and safety of the organizers. Everybody in the pit lane, on the track, and in the cars need to go home to their families safe. This is a sport where we don't want anybody to get hurt. During the session, he should not be up there, yes? A bit protected. Hello, can we put you on my 
it was not that clear. I said leading car, you can overtake from the right if he wishes for a familiarization lap, but a slow one, obviously. Okay. You want to keep the marshals on track? Uh, no, okay. marshals can go in. Vale, the marshals can retire, they can retire all the dispositives. If you want, retire all the dispositives of the marshals. You try to have a good relationship with the drivers, not too close, because you want to make sure that you, uh, as far as drivers are concerned, they're all equal. In, in your eyes, uh, but uh, you try to be as fair as possible and to make them understand that, again, the number one priority is safety and a level playing field for the competition. Okay, it is very dangerous. There was absolutely no reason for the car to be parked in the middle of the track, so please make sure to be logical and ensure your safety and the other safety by getting off the track as soon as possible. Without marshalling, there is no racing. Uh, the marshal is the person that ensures that the drivers are safe. Uh, they communicate with the drivers. Uh, they ensure that uh, a, a driver uh, in uh, problem is uh, looked after, is uh, taken out of danger. Uh, so marshalling is everything. Without marshals, there is no racing. This is the position of the sweeper normally. This is where it will be during the race. Okay, blinking orange. Balarava Brock, the safety. Okay, and off. Off. He apagar la, apagar la. Place looks good, excellent. They started in pole at Le Castellet, Monza and Imola, and they'll be aiming for their fourth pole of the 2022 season. It is, of course, the LMP3 leaders, recall racing number 17. We caught up with them and followed them during the qualifications. 30 seconds to the start of the LMP3 qualifying practice session. Easy, have fun. Thank you. I will. Three. Two, one. Pit exit is green. Pit exit is green. This is the European Le Mans series LMP3 qualifying practice session. Looks good lap for Antoine. Yeah, the Pampello is quicker. It will be super difficult here because of the temperatures. As we all know, it's 30 degrees at least. And then tomorrow to be driving around for four hours will be a yeah, difficult one. But we will do our best and yeah, it's the best starting position we can have. He's done this year. He's just continually improved all year long. And um, he continually questions his, his lap times and questions his, his, his data and, and tries to get uh, the best he can out of his performance and out of the people we have here at Pool.
race day here in Barcelona and lights will be going out in just a few minutes. In LMGTE, Ahmed Al Hati got pole for car number 69. In LMP3, Melta Jakobsen scored his fourth pole of the season for cool racing car number 17. And in LMP2, Nico Jamin's flying lap got pole for Panis racing car number 65. Let's go racing. Un petit peu de distance de Préma, on est troisième au championnat, on se bat beaucoup avec Idec. Donc ouais, la gagne ce serait vraiment méga important et méga appréciable. Those gaps we will start putting getting into the grid position at turn 10. Ready to get the European Le Mans series back underway here in Barcelona. 39 cars being paced by Julian Canal with the blue highlights. Niklas Croyton alongside him on the front row. Away we go. Good solid start by both front row men. Everybody manoeuvring around behind, trying to find some space. Look down the inside. The red car, Sally Yolich, Racing Team Turkey, kicks up the dirt into the braking area. Canal very late on the brakes. Very brave indeed. A huge risk of contact there. Well, it was a good lunge and a good start. The Turkish driver in second place, but Julian Canal has the lead of the race here in Barcelona. Everybody else safely through, it seems, in LMP2. There's the LMP3 leaders as well, and the GT cars behind, but there are yellow flags out, and that will be an incident at the tail of the field somewhere, and it's Sara Bovi. Looks like the Iron Dames Ferrari has had a big hit. You see the bright pink car right in the middle of the pack there. GT's behind, LMP3's alongside. Oh, and it looks like contact there. Was that Euro International's Freddie Hunt? It might have been. Oh, and more, and that is James Maguire, number three United car. That's a cool car, I think number 27. Is that jean Ludovic Foubert? Well, I'm afraid the Iron Dames look like they are very much out of the race. So Iron Lynx team not thrilled with that and United and Cooler down a car as well. Oh dear me, that car has had a lot of damage I'm afraid. And that is three cars whose races are over before they even began. Back to green flag racing, Julian Canal leads them to the green light, Sally Yolich right behind him. Niklas Croyton in third in the cool racing car, then Ferdi Habsburg for Prema. You can see the Inter Europol car, the green and yellow Pietro Fittipaldi pulls out immediately from the slipstream of the AF Corsa car. Francois Perodo through he goes. That's a change for seventh place. On board with Francois Perodo, back down to eighth now. Feeling Chimodomo under pressure with the green highlights to the game car on Mimo Rojas. The Mexican started 16th. Through he goes, he's now up to 11th. 
Here's the battle for fifth in GTE. The Japanese driver Takeshi Kimura in the yellow Kessel Racing Ferrari just holding off Indonesia's Andrew Harianto. There's been a change for second place. Niklas Kreuten for Cool Racing has got ahead of the Racing Team Turkey car. And Sally Ullich now under pressure from Ferdy Habsburg in the number nine Prema car down the straight. We can't see his mirrors. Let's see if the Prema car appears on our right. No, not yet. Jolic defending on the inside. Now he comes very late, Ferdy Habsburg. He loves a late dive, Ferdy. Very comfortable under braking in that car. He goes through for third. Great pass. Different look to our GTE leader. That's Christian Reed with the black and gold livery for the 77 Proton competition car. Black as well for Ahmad El Harty, Oman Racing with TF Sport, Michael Fassbender, the 83 Proton car. He lies in third with that familiar green livery, but another different livery, red and black for JMW Motorsport. That's Giacomo Petrobelli pushing on in fourth. Play of the battle for 12th. Look at this, Mulder Motorsports, Matthias Kaiser, little rub around the outside of Rodrigo Sales. Christian Reed still under real pressure from the Aston Martin. There it is. That's Ahmad Al Harty. There's the battle for the lead. Four cars in this lead train. Al Harty looking down the hill into the inside. Hard braking there. And he runs out very wide. And that's going to cost him two places. Oh, got in front, he only lost one, but that was very close indeed. The Ferrari was nearly by him as well. Giacomo Petrobelli attacking for third as the Proton Porsches go 1-2 here. Race shaping up very nicely already for Panis Racing. Julian Canal comfortably out front, look at that, five seconds. And we're just about half an hour into the four-hour race. Nick Croyton in second position. Up to third is the Prema car. Fourth place, Racing Team Turkey. And there is the battle for second. Number nine, Prema Racing, right behind the Cool Racing engine now. So Ferdy Habsburg closing down Nicolas Croyton, looking for an opportunity to make the pass. Oh, there's trouble, and that's Algar Pro's Bent Viscal. Facing the wrong way in the final corner. Got to be careful looping it round here so he doesn't go into the gravel. Nicely done. Change for the lead, number nine, Ferdinand Habsburg, ahead of the 65 Panis car there in traffic. So it looks maybe as though Julian Canal was held up by the LMP3 cars. Ferdy Habsburg had been reeling him in and then he pounced. What does the replay show us? Oh, yeah, the Paris car getting held up by somebody else's battle. Habsburg had the clean line through. Ahmad Alharty, third place now in the black TF Sport Aston Martin. Right up behind Michael Fassbender in the second of the Proton competition cars. Fassbender having a really good stint in this car at the opening of the race. And into the chicanes they come at the end of the lap. Giacomo Petrobelli is right there. Christian Reed not too far in front either. But we did see that Ahmed Al Harty had a lunge early on on Christian Reed for the lead. Didn't go well. The Proton competition car, 93 car, got back past him. Now, with the LMP2 car coming down the inside, is this an opportunity? Ooh, Fassbender has to stay out a little wide. Through goes the P2 car. But Ahmad Al Harty now getting a good run on the exit. Here we go. He's trying to come the long way around the outside. Can't do that there. Petrobelli trying to sneak inside for third place. Does he get a chance? Up the hill into turn three. Giacomo Petrobelli is still there. Still there. And Ahmad Al Harty runs out of room. Petrobelli just runs out wide, gives him a little clip as well. So Ahmad Al Harty was in second place early on, now shuffled down to fourth place. All arms and elbows still in the battle for second in GTE. You can see that the leader is just up the road, three and a half seconds ahead of Michael Fassbender, but it is a Proton competition, one, two. Petrobelli's Ferrari in third, Al Harty fourth in the Aston now. 
the battle in LMP3 and the Inter Europol car, the yellow and green car of Charlie Cruz was in front. Josh Cagill has squeezed by for United, but it is by no means a done deal. United Auto Sports car number two just creeping in front with the Inter Europol car all over the back of him. The battle is not yet over. Michael Fassbender's rear-facing camera shows us the third-place car in GT, Giacomo Petrobelli in the JMW Motorsport Ferrari, right up behind the Irish driver in the Porsche. And Ahmed Al Harty waiting to pick up the pieces. Petrobelli on the inside, spins out the Porsche. Clumsy, clumsy, clumsy. The door was always going to close. Well, Fassbender under real pressure there. And I'm afraid that wasn't great. Right behind him, as the leader comes through, he dives into the pit. So through goes Duncan Cameron, spirit of race. And maybe a driver change coming up here for Proton as well. All Ferrari battle for ninth in GTE. The red car, Rinaldi Racing, Diego Alessi around the outside of the yellow Iron Lynx Ferrari of Claudio Schiavoni. Having to use all the curb to try and get by. Unless he's still on the outside, Schiavone is still defending hard, but the place changes hands. Fuel and tyres for Michael Fassbender. No driver change, though. Looks like the Proton Porsche got away with that contact with very little damage. Well, here's how it happened. A lunge down the inside from Giacomo Petrobelli in the final chicanes, and Fassbender quick to respond, heads straight into the pits. Well, that gives him a chance to get the car checked over and do a fuel and tyre stop because those tyres will be very flat spotted. That wasn't a planned pit stop. We were going to go a little bit further, but then after the incident uh, on the track, we figured, you know, might as well get it over with because we were in that window. So you've managed to kind of weave that into your strategy? Yeah, it was uh, quick thinking. Great job by the team. I don't think we lost too much time, everything considering. So uh, we're still very much in the race. Because there's a great, there's been some great battles in the GT category uh, in the early part of the race. And Michael doing fantastically, really holding on up until that incident to the second place. Yeah, it's been, it's been a great start. I think he really likes following Chris. <laughs> Um, when Chris is in front of him, he's kind of able to keep learning and, and he's been driving a great race. Trouble there for DKR Engineering, that's car number four, that's Tom Van Rompuy. Grassy moment for him. Here he is chasing down Mikey Benham. Benham in the cool racing entry and two into one, doesn't go at turn one. Van Rompuy was trying to get himself out of the hole he dug there, wasn't he? Well, here is the car that was our LMP2 leader, United Auto Sports' Joshua Cagill, now back to second. And here is why a looping spin, and that has cost him a lot of time. Francois Perodo in the Chrome, number 88A of Corsa car, started in fifth. This is now the battle for ninth place with Matthias Kaiser of Mulder Motorsport right behind him. And the job of Francois Perodo, like all the gentlemen driver, is to lose as little time to the pros around them as they can during their stints. Perodo holding the racing line, but he's going to keep it clean, can't risk any contact. Through goes the Mulder Motorsport car. And Algarve Pro's bent Viscal lining up now to have a go at the AF Corsa driver. Looking back for Michael Fassbender. Fassbender in fourth, Giacomo Petrobelli for JMW in fifth place. This time goes through cleanly with no contact. But there is trouble for Michael Fassbender. Offline for an LMP2 car, looping spin around. It looks like that right front fender has also come loose for some reason. So there may be more to it than that. Michael Fassbender having to, I'm sure, head into the pit lane to have that attended to. Race taking a bit of a retrograde step. He's now behind leader Christian Reed. Into the pits comes Ahmad Al Harty. His bonnet is loose. So the Oman Racing driver heads to the TF Sport team. There is a replacement ready to go. And they will do fuel and tyres as well. It's not when they were scheduled to stop. Sometimes the race forces a strategy on you. Ah, oh, now here's trouble for IDEX ball. That's Paul Lafargue. Has there been contact? He's in the gravel anyway. Full course yellow deployed. Full course yellow deployed. 
Race director fires Ramsey. And that will trigger a scramble for the pits. Lorenzo Colombo ready to take over there from Ferdi Habsburg in the number nine Prema car. Julian Canal is in at Panis. And you can see Nico Jama there on the hard shoulder waiting to take over. Team get the car squared up. It's a busy pit lane, so not everybody can come straight into their garage. Looks like the damage has been repaired for Ahmad Al Harty. Away goes the Aston. Paul Lafargue out of the gravel. Swift work by the marshals, but that nose is very crumpled. He'll be heading straight to the pits. Full course yellow removed. Number nine, Preva Car now. The race leader with Lorenzo Colombo aboard. And everybody has made their stops, so they are now reset. Nico Lapierre in the cool racing car in second place. And Hayley Edmonds is down at Edexport to find out what happened to Paul Lafargue. He made a mistake under the braking. He lost the car and, uh, and he got stuck in the gravel. So, you know, he's, uh, he's very um, devastated, you know, because, you know, when you make a mistake, you, you, you feel the weight. But what can you say? Racing is like this sometimes. Uh, he, he was driving very well. His pace was very good. We were all on target with everything, but uh, sometimes racing can be like this. And, uh, you know, it's tough out there. The track is pretty slippery. And there was a mistake, and that was it. Battle in LMP2 for second place. Nicolas Jama, the Panis car, closing in on Nico Lapierre. They're both trying to catch the number nine Prema racing car. But there is problems now for the 65 car, not respecting the position at the start. Now that means maybe not staying in front of the cool racing car when they were on pole position controlling the field. Oh, trouble. That's number two, Josh Cagill off again. Took the lead in LMP3, but has had two off-track excursions. Look at the white and green Ferrari. That's Matt Griffin closing on Diego Alessi. Now this is the battle for third in GTE. Rinaldi racing Ferrari and Griffin comes out and down the hill on the inside. No, can't get through there. He's three downhill left-handers. This time though, Alessi runs wide, defended too deep and through on the inside comes Griffin. Will he get through before the track goes uphill again? Yes, he does. Good pass by Matt Griffin. Excellent work by the Ferrari driver. Nico Lapierre and Nico Jama in traffic. And Lapierre, oh, bit of a squirm behind the LMP3 cars. A little bit of a moment there for the veteran. And his younger compatriot taking advantage. Through goes the 65 car, or tries to at least. No, doesn't get through. In a real bunch of P2 and P3, slower traffic. Oh, and Shama around the outside. But there's nowhere through there either. Oh, this could all go very wrong for everybody. LMP2 car of Josh Cagill dived into the pits ahead of all of that. Big shock for Julian Canal watching the action in the pit lane. Are we okay? Are we all right? We're okay. It is tight out there, but the damage is on the front of Nico Lapierre's cool racing entry. For sure, it was a crazy start for me. I, have, uh, I had a big gap uh, with the, all uh, of the guys in, in, uh, behind me. So I can take, uh, take a long distance from them after we have a safety car. That safety car pack everyone and after I take again a gap. But uh, Ferdinand Habsburg, uh, for me, I have a good traffic. It's a, he's a bit uh, faster than me. So I try to, to stay with him, but it was quite difficult. And after I was in a good rhythm, I engineer told me that I am nearly in his time as well. And after that, we had um, like an incident with Scruten. I'm sorry, but we went together to break really late and I lose the front. So we didn't touch his soldier, but uh, I have a penalty, I think, of five seconds. Trouble for James Dason into Europol competition. Another looping spin. 15 seconds for full course yellow. Marshals are going to need to tow him out of there with the vehicle.
Michael Lapierre's repaired cool racing car comes back out of the pit lane. Here are our race leaders. Lorenzo Colombo for Prema overall, Nico Pino for Inter Europol in P3, and Singapore's Sean Hudspeth leads in GTE for JMW. Back to green flag racing and back to the battles here in Barcelona, round four of the European Le Mans series into the second half of the race. On board with Alessio Picariello, the Belgian driver for absolute racing in their black and bronze Porsche. Matteo Cressoni for Iron Links right ahead in this battle for fifth. And P cars queuing up to get past as well. They will come past down the straight as if the GT cars are standing still. And that's an opportunity for Alessio Picariello to pick up a tiny toe, closing on the Ferrari, looking to the inside, is he? Yes, he is. It's a late lunge under braking, well judged. Had to get that stopped in time, and he did. Well, that's an absolute classic Barcelona overtake and picked up a little slipstream from a faster car to help. On board with Inter Europol, this is Nicolas Pino leading in LMP3. And he's using the slipstream to go by the Kessel Racing Ferrari. He leads from 360's number six car and car number four from DKR that was off track earlier on with two Euro International cars in the top five. Haley is down at Inter Europol with Charles Cruz. This is completely about managing the tires right now. We've had to be so disciplined early in the stint to control our pace. All these ELMS races, four hours, a lot can happen. It's keeping the car clean and uh, keeping the dive planes on it, which we have most of them, but not all of them. Uh, it, it's just about, it, we, we learned so much in Monza and together as a package, we've come together and, and we're, we're really diving and collecting, so. Action everywhere you look here in the ELMS race in Barcelona. This is the battle for fifth place in LMP3. Louis Rousset under pressure from Cool Racing's Malte Jakobsen. The young Dane all over the back of the French driver. Spent very similar time in the pits. Just a couple of seconds between them. And look at the pace of the youngster. Looking for a way by now. He's where he needs to be in the slipstream onto the straight. Now, the Euro International car gets the hammer down earlier. Coming out of the corner better, but here comes Jakobsen. Goes to the inside nice and early. The earlier you make the move, the clearer it's going to be for the driver you're trying to pass. The better chance of survival for both of you. Good move. Through he goes. Yiffy Ye, suited and helmeted, watching in the garage. He's obviously ready for a stint in his cool racing LMP2 car. This is a replay of Jack Aitken trying to get around the outside of Matthias Besch. The TDS Racing by Vant driver hangs on though. Leader in the pits, Louis Delatraz. And in is the 65 for Panis Racing as well. First and second pitting together. Jack Aiken in the red and black racing team Turkey car now attacking Alex Peroni of Algarve Pro. This is a battle for eighth place. He did get ahead of Matthias Besch and gets ahead of the Algarve Pro car as well. Jack Aiken on a real tear here. Aiken charging up the order for racing team Turkey. Duquesne's Richard Bradley under pressure from A, of course, is Alessio Rivera. This is the battle for fifth place overall. As Prema still lead in the final hour now, moments into the final hour here in Barcelona. Onto the straight we go. Duquesne in front and the A, of course, the car in the slipstream, closing, closing, closing. And Richard Bradley defends the yeah, A, of course, a car can't go inside. We'll have to try and go outside, but there's no way through this time for Alessia Rivera. Bradley having to make sure he got the door shut nice and early there. He's still giving away a little bit of speed advantage, it seems, as they work their way through traffic. Richard Bradley flashing the headlights. Right behind is the Algarve Pro car. This is now a three-way battle, and the Duquesne car once more just about keeping his nose in front. 
It can be a long, fine laugh for Richard Bradley under this kind of pressure. Alessio Rivera hounding the Duquesne machine in front of him. But he has to be careful. If he fumbles an attack, then he will give a place away to the car behind from Algarve Pro. On board again now. Let's see if we can close a little bit down into the last sector of the lap. Over the crest, this fast right-hander. Cars hanging on here. And then plunging downhill into the last sector of the lap. And this is where some very late braking can occasionally pay off, but it's a high-risk option. Much better to get lined up onto the straight and then try and make the move down into turn one. So here we go again. Second lap in succession as we follow this battle. Closing, closing, closing. And this time again, not quite close enough for Alessio Rivera. Richard Bradley didn't have to take quite such strong evasive action. Rivera again with a little more grip, it seems, perhaps in the slower stuff. Richard Bradley doing great work in defence. At the moment, Richard Bradley really under pressure because the Algar Pro car is not close enough to the back of the 88A of Corsa car to really put him under pressure. Again, down the straight. Again, Bradley has to move a little to the right to defend. And again, Rivera stays outside. This time, though, he's got the line. Through he goes. Paid off. Persistence, dogged persistence. And up to fifth place he goes. Into the pitch from seconds. This is a replay of the Panis Racing stop. Car number 65, Jot van Oetert waiting. Nothing happening here. This is a five-second penalty they were serving. But they've now been handed a 10-second penalty for their next pit stop. In the eighth place queue, running out very wide, Thomas Surratt and through the red and black car, Ben Hanley for Nielsen. So he moves up to ninth. Milner down to 10th, chasing the Algarve Pro blue and black car that's in eighth spot. Ross Kaiser, third in LMP3, under real pressure from Marty Jakobsen, who sends it deep into turn five. Classic late lunge in Barcelona, and the cool racing driver moves up a spot into a podium position. Three, two, one. Full course yellow deployed. Full course yellow deployed. Everybody slows down to 80 kilometers an hour. The pit lane speed limiters back in operation. And this is for a little bit of clear up. There's debris on the main straight. Nobody needs to be running over that. Marshall has a chance to go and collect it. That's a large panel. Full course yellow removed. Full course yellow removed. And Ferrari driver David Regon in the yellow Iron Lynx Ferrari responds immediately. Race being led by the 55 Spirit of Race Ferrari, but here is the battle for six in GTE. Proton competitions, Zachary Robichon coming under pressure from the Ferrari factory ace who dives through on the inside. Just enough room to get by. Good work from David Abrigal responding immediately as they went back to green racing. Zachary Robichon will learn a lot by following him round as well. And that's exactly what every up and coming driver wants to do. 88A, of course, a car in the middle of the battle for seventh place now with the Proton Competition car of Zachary Robichon being run down by the Oman Racing TF Sport Red Machine. Enrique Chavez goes through on the inside in turn five. And Robichon again shuffle back down the order. And you can see from the onboard that the right front fender that was loose when Michael Fassbender was driving it is still loose. Here's the battle for the lead of the race. David Perel under real pressure now from Jimmy Bruni, who's been catching him fast. He goes immediately to the inside. Little bit of contact. Perel knew he was coming, tried to hold a tighter line, but Jimmy Bruni squeezes through and into the lead he goes. 
More changes in GTE. This has just happened. And that is Absolute Racing's Martin Rump being passed by Kessel Racing's Mikkel Jensen for fourth. Assertive move from Jensen. He wasn't taking any arguments there from Martin Rump. Here is our race leader inside the final 10 minutes for Prema. Louis de la at the wheel and 23 seconds ahead of the Panis Racing car in second spot. So this should be fairly straightforward in terms of a run to the flag. The Panis Racing should have been closer, but they picked up a couple of penalties during the race and that always hurts your competitive speed. But Prema have kept their noses clean and they have kept their pace up. Oh, more trouble for the number two United Auto Sports car. That's Finn Gersitz. Dear, oh dear, they have had a troubled race. Tired tyres, lots of rubber marbles around the racetrack. And he is caught out in the closing stages. Louis Delatraz leads Guillaume Oliveira leads in LMP3 and Jimmy Bruni leading in GTE and the Prema team now starting to believe that this is going to go their way. Ferdy Hagsberg suiting up with teammate Lorenzo Colombo as they head to the pit wall to greet their teammate. It is Louis Delatraz who heads towards the checkered flag and victory in round four of the European Le Mans series. Prema Racing may be new to endurance, but they are a hugely professional organization and the quality absolutely shines through. This will be their third win from four starts this season. Victory in LMP2 and overall goes to Prema Racing. Confirmation, Prema coming out on top. The Pro-Am winners in fifth, AF Corsa. GG3 winners into Europol's car number 13, 17th overall. And in 25th place, Proton claim victory in GTE. Jubilation for the Prema team. All this winning is becoming very habit forming. I can't say too much because we all did it together. It was so cool. Uh, one of those weekends that didn't start off super easy, was not so difficult. And the sound is not making so easy either, but we had a great time. I'm super stoked. Also, after the last time in Monza, we didn't quite get that win. We were struggling. We came back to win the race and now establish our position in the championship. And yeah, we're going to have a couple of beers, have a good night and be, celebrate that one. That felt good. Prema Racing, Lorenzo Colombo, Ferdinand Habsburg and Louis Delatraz claim victory from Panis with Julian Canal, Jop van Eutent and Nico Jama. Cool Racing's Nico Lapierre, Nicolas Croyton and Yiffy Yi finishing in third place. And confirmation that Prema now extend their advantage over Panis with United Autosports in third. After another strong outing, victory in the LMP2 Pro-Am category went to the number 88 AF Corsa car. It was uh, amazing, so we just had to push. Uh, Francois and uh, Nicolas made an amazing job, job and I had just to carry the car to the finish line. Francois Perodo congratulates his rivals along with Nick Nielsen and Alessio Rivera as they take LMP2 Pro-Am honours. Ahead of Rodrigo Sales, Matt Bell and Ben Hanley for Nielsen and Algarve pros John Falp, James Allen and Alexander Peroni and Racing Team Turkey have now a 10 point advantage over Nielsen with A of Corsa coming up fast on the rails. Into Europol competition, the winners in Monza brought that momentum to Spain to claim victory in LMP3. We had the race really, really on, on our ends after the first hit of Charles where he did a mega job. And uh, Nico just took the car and brought it home and I just had to do the same. So uh, really happy. And uh, that's two in a row. So uh, we are back in the fight and uh, hopefully we can grab the championship in Portimão. They are just five points off leaders cool with two rounds to go 25 points one win covers the top five teams it's all to play for in lmp3 
The GT battle was perhaps the toughest of the lot at the frantic Barcelona four hours and Jimmy Bruni brought the 77 Proton Porsche through to the chequered flag to claim victory for the team. It's really hard in the car and I always had the, the other cars in my mirror so I was pushing as much as I can but the car was super super fast and super good. Lean stint, give the car to uh, Lorenzo and then Lorenzo to Jimmy and they did both great and so happy to win the race. Thumbs up from Jimmy Bruni who with Christian Reed and Lorenzo Ferrari won for Proton Competition. Spirit of Race Ferrari crew Duncan Cameron, Matt Griffin and David Perel finished second ahead of fellow Ferrari drivers Giacomo Petrobelli, Sean Hudspeth and Miguel Molina for JMW. A vital second place for Spirit of Race keeps them very much in the hunt. One point now ahead of Kessel Racing, two races to go. Proton have the points advantage. The sun sets on the beautiful track here in Barcelona after yet another enthralling ELMS race. We'll be back next month in Spa for the fifth round of the season. See you then.